everyone, it's Simon Keeling here at weatherweb.net and it is Sunday the 26th of January. Thanks again for watching. Well, after yesterday's excitement with the trough that went through and brought many of us uh, heavy rain, thunderstorms and even tornadoes that did cause some damage, uh, today we've seen heavy rain this morning. That's now cleared away. Um, and it looks as if, though, we are going to be in for a taste of winter during the course of this week. But, of course, this is forecasting in the UK, so it's not going to make life easy for us at all. Um, this is the ECM WF uh, series of charts in 24 hour steps. You get them from weatherweb.net. Uh, this is the analysis for midnight last night. And this is the low that's uh, deepened quickly on the left exit region of the jet stream and uh, has moved its way into western parts of Scotland, bringing us some pretty heavy uh, periods of rain during this morning on Sunday morning and he's about uh, ready to bring some uh, pretty strong winds. However, watch what happens. In 24 hours' time, we've got the low um, that's become absorbed into a further low northwest of Scotland. Got a uh, deep trough here, and this feature becomes cut off as a ridge builds out towards the west. Look, now watch what happens to that low into Tuesday. It's sinking its way southwards, and by Wednesday, it's expected to be over Ireland, over the southwest of England, and then it starts to pull in a cooler east to south easterly flows so that by Thursday we've got this easterly flow coming around the northern side of the low look it still is this cut off feature but it is warming through gradually now What's important to note here is that this isn't depths of winter stuff. And the reason is that, yes, we've got an anticlone built over Scandinavia, but really Scandinavia is not actually that cold at the moment, or it hasn't had a chance to get deeply cold. And also the winds coming into this system here, look, if you just follow the isobars around here, if you go um, downstream, look, you actually see the origin of the air is over North Africa. So the air that comes to us, yes, it's colder, but it's certainly not going to be bringing very cold conditions. I think probably what it does do is it brings periods of rain. It brings the threat of some uh, wintry weather, particularly um, on windward facing slopes and hills, so particularly out towards the east, but it doesn't do much more than that. Then into Friday, the, uh, the trough basically becomes just a cut off feature the surface feature gets uh, into the mediterranean the trough as the sorry the surface feature is the cut off feature the trough itself warming through you can see there on friday and by which stage the ecmwf then wants to bring us back in with the jet stream coming in from the west once again more strong winds across the north particularly and then it wants to just give us a brief hit of cold weather again as we get into the early part of the week after next but essentially you see here how the pattern just reverts back to time with that southwest westerly flow developing there and a further cut off into the Mediterranean so it's seeing cooler weather but not drastically cool by any means now this is the ensemble from the ECMWF uh, again in 24 hour steps the ensemble is basically lots of little models put together but each with a different starting point and the idea is that it gives you a slightly better take on how things may appear so this is the chart for uh, midnight Tuesday into Wednesday. There's our low going south on Thursday. On Friday, it's in the Mediterranean, the same as the operational. And then as we head into the weekend on Saturday, further low into the north and look, heading back to type from the west-southwest. So it certainly only sees this as a brief hit of cold before we return to the uh, wetter, more unsettled conditions once again. So the Canadian, how does that see things? Well, the Canadian, uh, this is in 12 hourly steps. Canadian looking a little bit more wintry. So here we go into, Monday there's Monday here we go into Tuesday night and then into Tuesday itself and into Wednesday look the system is pulling its way southwards but not quite as quickly as the ECMWF did however what it does into the middle part of Thursday is it starts to bring in air from the cooler part of uh, continental Europe here look and it blocks out the cool it blocks out the ridge which is across the country so with the cool air coming in it acts as a block and it blocks out this milder air coming in from the Atlantic so it holds us into colder conditions into cooler air for longer before bringing up this trough from the west in the Atlantic there trying to get it eastwards but it stops the movement of that trough eastwards now what this does is it doesn't until at least this point here threaten real winter wintry weather but what it does is it brings cooler conditions but the GM the Canadian is far more um, it's far more strong on the idea of bringing heavy rain into the west and really it doesn't want to let go of that cool air at all because then into Monday the third look it sets up this easterly flow colder air coming in from the continent and it keeps it in there right the way through until the 5th of February setting us up into a proper 
cold snap. So the Canadian eventually becomes much colder than the um, than the ECMWF. Now the GFS ensemble actually looks like this. Um, we've got the times here, top right hand corner. So as we head in towards Monday, there's our low look slipping its way southwards. Here we are now into Wednesday, the low over the continent, and then into Thursday. So again, very similar conditions, but notice it's holding on to the cooler air from the ridge out towards the east longer, and it's trying to hold back the Atlantic stuff um, a little longer. And then into next weekend, look, it gets another trough through, puts it into the central parts of Europe, but maintains this easterly flow. So it wants to keep us with more of an easterly flow for slightly longer than the ECMWF, although not quite as long as the um, Canadian. And it tries to keep this battle ongoing as well. But eventually it says, well, look, the west or southwesterlies will break through, but it may take some time. So what can we draw from this? Well, essentially what we can look at from these charts is the idea that there is some discrepancy over how long cool air will last. My feeling is that we do get the cooler air coming in. It certainly isn't a, a, a taste of, of real winter, but we could get some snow almost anywhere during this week. And there could be a covering even at low levels, particularly in the east, but um, it's more likely over high ground. And certainly there'll be rain around. Then we get a real battle taking place into next weekend and into the beginning of the week after. And I think there we could see some very wet weather, particularly out towards the west. And it will stay chilly for all. But I do then think that next week, essentially, we get back into this west to west southwesterly flow. The unsettled weather winds through again and we stay on the cool side. That seems to be a logical progression of things at the moment. Now, CFS looking like this. Deep trough into week one. Trough is still there into week two, low than normal heights here, and hence the reason for the cooler conditions. And then into week three, um, trough coming back in, but this is more of a southerly. This is part of the battle that the GFS ensemble is seeing, and this is where I think we could go very wet into this early part of February, particularly between about the the, the 5th through till about the 10th. And then uh, 15th to 24th, to 21st of February, week four, it tries to bring us back more into a southwesterly and milder southwesterly, but still very unsettled conditions through the country. And do you know what? I think that's probably the way things will shape up. So we head into a wetter, colder end to January, set up for a colder, wet start to February, staying unsettled into the middle of the month before that southwesterly kicks in again later on. Okay, so uh, thanks again for watching. I um, wanted just to bring you up to date on uh, where we are with things just at the moment but uh, whatever you're doing have a great day and keep the sun shining bye for now